Can you fit in a regular car? Okay. You can definitely pop a watermelon with those thumbs. <laughs> What's going on out there in YouTube land? Today we are with 7'8", Wonderkin, one of the best artists I've seen. You guys should go follow him on Instagram if you haven't. The guy can draw, he's mechanically inclined. You've probably seen him on Dr. Oz and Oprah. Homies with Shaq, it's where he got these shoes from. Brendan Adams. What's going on? What's going on, man? So you may not have seen him for a while. He hasn't done a ton of media since his uh, Oprah days, uh, but he's feeling a lot better than he used to. They've got his medical situation sort of figured out. But as you can guess, he's, you know, seven foot eight, seven foot nine, somewhere in that ballpark. <laughs> Very tall, so um, he definitely deals with some lower back pain and neck pain. So we're gonna do some soft tissue work on him, help him out there. Um, but like I said, all, all in all, he's been doing a lot better health-wise, pain-wise. Yep. Uh, just needs a little bit of tune-up, right? So you've been following on social media for oh, a little? Definitely. Okay, cool, cool. Been following for a while. Awesome. So so what are you expecting today? You're a little, little scared, a little nervous? Um, no. I'm not really. I'm just glad you were able to come here, so. Yeah, well, thanks for inviting us. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, you ready to rock and roll? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, Brendan, so um, tell us a little bit about your condition. So if you guys hadn't been following, Dr. Oz kind of talked about it. And, uh, you know, he had, a, he had a group of geneticists that had some really powerful computer tools that sort of figured this out when he was about eight. But he's, he's basically one of ones. If you thought your NFT was rare, he's rare. Yeah, so as far as I know, I'm the only one in recorded history that has my genetic alteration. And it was completely by accident. Other than that, it's, most people think the pituitary gland or... There's a few other things that make people tall, but mine's completely different. Right, yours is based on the inversion of that chromosome 12. Exactly. So they think they think you know early on the the, the side of the chromosome actually flipped and then reattached, and basically every gene, every cell in his body has that DNA now. So it just it doesn't it doesn't create his proteins in the same way that it would create mine. So um, his his bone size is obviously much bigger. The ends of his bone have a completely different shape, obviously as well. Um, which has made him very tall. And then his doctors kind of figured out when he was a teenager that they were trying to blunt, you know, some of this growth, because otherwise, you know, you may have been eight, nine. You know, they, they didn't have an estimate, but the rate that I was growing, they compared me to Wal uh, Robert Walto. And was I was- Eight foot 11 or something? Eight foot 11 or something like that. And I was on the progressive chart to reach that when I was same age as him as a kid. Yeah, and you have a your Guinness World Record, right? Yeah, from 2009, I think it's the uh, tallest team. Okay. And so tallest teen, is that to 17? So I'm not sure, because you're a teenager until you're 19, but 19, um, yeah, sure. I got measured when I was in seventh grade, so probably 13 or 14 years old. Okay. And I was 7'3 then. Wow. And how did you get in contact with Shaq? How did that come about? So that came up because of Oprah. Okay. Oprah called Shaq and uh, arranged that to happen, and that was super cool. And how did you meet Oprah? Um, some phone call came through my mom and was like, hey, we would like you to be on the show. Would you like to come? And I was like, yeah, I'd love to come. Okay. And then that's, that's where you also met Dr. Oz, is that? And yeah, I got to spend a day with him and he asked a bunch of questions and filmed and got to shoot some basketball hoop with him for a little bit. And okay. Kind of just walked around town, downtown Chicago and did some filming for him. And he's a super cool guy. Nice. So, so you, you know he's running for Senate, right? I did. Yeah, he's he's in he's in a center race right now, so it's a very uh, hotly contested case. <laughs> but he's a friend of yours, so you're allowed to yeah, yeah, cheer for the guy. So, um, okay, cool. And then Shaq, you know, he hooked you up with a tailor. You said, and yeah, yeah, I got to so through Oprah, we got to spend a day with him when he was playing for Phoenix. Okay. So they flew me out to Phoenix, and then um, I got to sit courtside and watch a game. Unfortunately, he was having back issues, so he didn't get to play. Okay. So instead of watching him play, he brought us back to the locker room and got to hang out one-on-one -on -one for a little bit. And, nice. Um, from there... Um, the you, you were 12? Like 12, 13. And you were taller than him? Yeah. <laughs> but Shaq's a different kind of big. Shaq's actually a big dude. I'm a really skinny guy. Right. So he's 7'1", but makes me feel small. Because he's like... 300. Yeah, so he's like 350 at least. Yeah, yeah, at least. What do you weigh? Uh, like 230, 240. Okay, so not, not that much. Your BMI is not that high, actually. Uh, yeah. Right, for your height. Okay, and so you've had physical therapy, you've had like chiropractic care in the past, and mm -hmm. it has helped you? Yeah, it has. It's been a huge relief, but okay. I've been kind of stubborn about it. I only need it. I only go when I need it. Okay. Instead of going occasionally. Right, and then you, you said you were talking about like you, you work on stretching and then you know, sometimes you you're, you start to make some progress, and then it kind of sets you back a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about massage? Do you do any massage? Have you done any? Massage? Um, I have 
head massage. I've got it um, okay for insurance and stuff to have like 10 a year, I think. Okay, do you do that? I do, and it helps a lot. Okay. You yeah. probably need it. I mean, a little, need more more often, a little more often than that, but it's what we can get insurance to cover. So. Gotcha. Uh, are you single? Yeah. Okay. And then your Instagram is just your name for them? Yeah, it's Brendan Adams 95 it's, That's as far as I got. But then if I stand up all the way, then I lose my belt because my heels don't touch. Okay. We're good on my toes. Okay. Go on. Sit back there. Okay. That's some pretty sweet stretch marks. Yes, you do. <laughs> all right. So we're going to start right here. I'm going to work right on the soft tissue. How do you do laying on your side? I'm good on my You're okay, so let's do that. But don't break the table. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video that you're watching, but if you're interested in pursuing this kind of work as a career, you too can become a doctor of neuropathy. Go to sunm.edu, I put the link in the description below, you can check it out. <laughs> I told you it's on its last leg at this point. Oh, we're good right there. You good there? Yep. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna work right along the soft tissue. So obviously you don't know any different, but what was it like growing up, like being so much taller than everybody? Um, I made a lot of friends that were older, that's for sure. Okay. Um, you know, I used to hang out with like all the cool kids, the high schoolers and stuff in the back of the bus. Okay. Have you ever met anybody taller than you? Um, I actually haven't. Um, I have a buddy of mine that played for Gonzaga, and then he played professional basketball in Japan, uh -huh. but he's 7'4". Okay. And that's the closest guy that I've met to my height. Now there is somebody out there in the world that's taller than you, right? Maybe? Um, I'm not actually sure on that one. Okay. But uh, during the Guinness World uh, Record stuff, I got a trip to Italy uh -huh. to shoot the TV show for it. And I got to meet a bunch of really cool people there. Um, I got to meet the tallest couple. Okay. And they're both around seven foot. So the combined so seven and seven, okay. Yeah. Um, so did they ever, so they obviously they measured you when you were a teenager. Yeah. Do you have an official measurement now that you've fully grown? I don't. Okay, so you don't actually know exactly how tall you are. No, uh, as official as I can get, um, the ceiling in our old house was seven, eight. Okay. And I could stand from the floor to the ceiling and it was exactly the same height. Okay, so you think you're at least seven, eight? At least seven, eight. Because so, Yao Ming was like 7'6", not Wes is. Yeah, um, if I could get my heels to touch the ground, uh, instead of walking on my toes, I would probably be around the same height. That leaves about two inches. Okay. And there's a guy, there's a basketball player. I've seen, you've seen him online, he's a, he, he dunks like standing. I think I know who you're talking about. Um, <laughs> there's a guy in the NBA right now who's pretty tall, Ta Taco. I don't know how tall he is. Am I saying they're in Yeah, tough, yeah. yeah, yeah. Play, yeah. The Celtics. The funny thing is... I think he's 7'7". Seven, seven. Yeah. There's a couple guys that are close. Okay. I know that for sure, but uh, I'm more... Uh, I'm definitely more into the car stuff. I get asked the basketball question all the time, but... <laughs> well, what's the question? Uh, everybody assumes that anybody over 6'5 plays basketball. <laughs> Actually, I've heard that from people. <laughs> Do you know who Bo Brown is? I don't. He's a he's a buddy. He actually did play basketball, but <laughs> <laughs> but he he you know I don't think I, he said that he was a baseball guy at first, but he's like seven one. Okay. Uh, but he gets he makes all these viral videos about like he puts a GoPro on his head. Oh, I do know who you're talking about. Yeah, and like it's millions of views. Where like this is what it's like to be on a plane when you're seven yeah, so, one. Yeah, um, my favorite one of his is when he goes to the show. When he goes to the store uh -huh. and shows how dusty all the tops of the shelves are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I laugh so hard at that because I like, see that all the yeah, time. Yeah, he's like, you guys don't even know what it's like up here. <laughs> everything underneath the door frame looks clean, but yeah. everything above the door is, you know, nobody's touched it in years. <laughs> Who knew? Only Brendan knew. Don't walk around out here and give me your beer. I know, just so you and know, if Brendan's coming to your <laughs> office, make sure you, you know, uh, clean the tops because he's going to see it. He's going to snitch on it too. You can let everybody know. So you, you, yeah, yeah. Have you always been into cars? Yeah, I grew up around cars, so it's always been a big passion of mine. Yeah, I've seen you at some races, and you know, you've done some art for some guys, right? Yeah. Okay. No, uh, the, the recent one I did was I did a drawing of B.J. Baldwin. Okay. He's a 
the trophy truck driver. Right. And Super I took, famous. I took that uh, to him in Vegas, and uh, mm. I've been pretty lucky with the car show stuff. But I got to be some, f- be friends with some pretty cool people. Um, George Barris was a good friend of mine before he passed away. Wow. That's um, pretty cool. What, so what, what, just anything automotive or are you just, you know, just um, like show cars, sports cars, muscle cars? Pretty much anything automotive. Okay. Um, anything that goes around? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. I'm fascinated. Bikes too? Yeah. You probably um, can't ride one. If I could, I'd have a dyno. Okay. Do you have to customize your truck to fit in? Um, I've done some work to it. So originally when I bought my truck, I just moved the seat back, uh-huh. but I didn't have any headroom. So... <laughs> It was okay for a while, but then I needed the headroom, so I had a custom seat belt. Okay. And uh, put that in there, but other than that, it's mostly stock. Okay. But um, I have a car that I'm working on that I'm going to do a full custom seat and steering column and stuff in it. Can you fit in a regular car? Um, <laughs> so it's a, it's a funny story. My sometimes I feel like I don't fit in a regular car, and I'm like barely five, you know, whatever I am. I got a buddy, his dad calls me David Blaine, cause uh... Cause you do, cause you've gotten into them. Cause I've gotten into some cars, <laughs> I, I've gotten into some cars I probably shouldn't have been in. How, Sway? How? <laughs> I think the two, the two most impressive ones that I've gotten into was a CRX. Okay. And then, uh, my buddy had a WRX that had a roll cage in the back. And I climbed through the back door and got in the back seat of it. Wow. So you gotta see if you can fit into like a Lambo. Oh, uh, I do have a story for that actually. Oh yeah? Um, Here in Washington, in Tri-Cities, there's a company called Shelby Supercars. Uh Um, Around the time that I got my Guinness World Record, they got a Guinness World Record for world's fastest production car. What car was it? It was a, they called it the SSC Ultimate Arrow. Okay. And it broke the world record for fastest car 257 miles So this is the one of those ones they take on like the salt flats or whatever? Yeah. Okay. But they did it on a two-lane highway in tri here in Washington. Whoa! And uh, they got 257 miles an hour. <laughs> and so their new car that they're testing is uh, supposed to reach over 300. Whoa! But I did get a ride in that and I had to take the shoes off to get in that one. In the, in the, the 250 one? Yeah. Okay. You trying to get in the 300 one too? <laughs> um, we'll see. I think that one's a little smaller. There's not a passenger seat, right? There is. There is? It's, it's a production car. Oh, okay. Wow. They're only making like... 50. So did you get to ride the passenger seat? Yeah. And they went and they, they went to what speed with you? Well... Not 250, obviously, right? Not 250, <laughs> but... I, I don't, you probably couldn't with the mass, right? From what I could Let's see see. on the gauge, it was between 140 and 150. <laughs> and that was fun? Oh, yeah. It was a blast. Oh, you're crazy, man. <laughs> I get to like 90 and I'm like, okay, I'm yeah. yeah, a control here, bring it back. Depending on the car and the driver, that's the biggest part about it. Okay. So it depends mm-hmm. if you trust them or not? Yeah. <laughs> Got it. If they're, a, if they're a driver that knows what they're doing, uh-huh. and I, I rode with the guy that designed and built the car. Okay. So, so I, felt, I felt So he, he felt like he knew about it than anybody. And if yeah, he was going to go out, gonna, you know. He's not going to wreck his $800,000 yeah. car. You're like, if this is how I go out, he's losing everything yeah. too, so. Yeah. He's, he's not just some Joe Schmo out here. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's uh, let's have you flip facing this way then. Go ahead. <laughs> I keep watching these. <laughs> I keep watching these wrestlers like put me through the table, you know, that I was getting beat up by somebody. <laughs> what if the wood goes through your chest, your lungs, <laughs> or you know? It'll be all right. Let's go take chair shots and. Man, have you ever seen like the uh, the local circuits of wrestlers? They do the craziest stuff. They we have like 10, 15 chairs on top of each other. And yeah, throw them we have one that comes through uh, Cleom, I think, and there's like the the small people wrestling. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah we have that come through, and they they don't jump around. No. Well, and they have some interesting like spinal stuff too. A lot of times, right? Yeah. Because um, in a in a weird way, they're very similar to me. I'm just a lot bigger. Right, just the inverse, <laughs> like yeah. the reverse. But yeah, they have some, you know. They have the larger joints and stuff like that too. Right. So then they have like weirder joint angles and. Yeah. Um, the yellow, you know. 
Roll with what you got. It's gonna be coming off the top turnbuckle, that's what it is. <laughs> yep. It's gonna be going 150 miles an hour and that's what it is, you know? <laughs> hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but if you wanna support the channel, we got custom shirts over here, so if you wanna pick one of these up to support us, got some dad jokes on some of them, check it out right there. You can go to bunkerbranding.com slash Dr. Bo Hightower, and I stuck the description in the link below. So we'd appreciate it, you don't have to, but if you wanna grab a shirt, that's where you can get one. How's that pressure feeling? Feels, it feels good. Intense? Yeah. Okay. You definitely got good thumbs for it though. <laughs> you got a good poker face though. He was he was still just talking right along, no problem. Take any take your man, he's about to fulfill that this dream. <laughs> you could. Yeah. You know? They haven't moved out Ellensburg. Oh, oh. <laughs> Saying that right? They're gonna come get me now. He's out. <laughs> He said they didn't image town wrong. He can't go to the bar with us later. <laughs> Next thing you're gonna be with a horse. Well, city slicker over here. That. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> can't see it. Which is crazy, because like where I'm from is pretty rural actually. Like, but Albuquerque itself doesn't like really have. I mean, I guess it does in those ranchos, but it doesn't really have a lot of farms. So when I moved to Dallas, I went to school with all these kids from like Nebraska, Louisiana, Oklahoma, <laughs> and like everybody was like from a farm. And I told somebody, I was like, yeah, I've never actually been on a farm. Everybody looked at me like I was crazy. And I was like, oh, I'm the weird one? <laughs> no, they were talking about selling some tractor. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. So. What's funny is this is a farm town that's got a college right in the middle of it. Do what? So it's a farm town that's got a college right in the middle of it. Okay. Is that why you, you said that's why you came, right? Yeah, that's how I did appear. You didn't want to go to that college? Um... So, if I was going to go to college, I wanted to go to, for art. Okay. But um, I didn't want to do all the prereqs and all that kind of stuff just to go take one class that I wanted to take. Mm. Um, I actually had somebody offer to pay my tuition to go to the UW in Seattle. Oh, yeah? Um, but I turned it down just because of the campus size. I wasn't going wasn't to be able to walk around the campus because it's massive. Huge, right? Yeah. And then um, I didn't want to waste somebody's money because... Um, I only wanted to take one class, and I had to take all these other classes just to do it. What was the class you were wanting to do? Um, somewhere, something about art. Like, I just wanted to be a better artist. Okay. But I wasn't really into the learning the history and all the... So how did you learn to draw like you do? So, as a kid, I always used to kind of mess around. I was always drawing cars and stuff, because... I think the first one I used to draw was the General Lee on, like, monster truck shots and stuff. Okay. And then I just kept trying to... Oh, that, that car's cancelled. <laughs> I don't know if you know. I know. R.I.P. General Lee. I know. Not, um, not the real one, the car. <laughs> I'm canceled too. But, um, <laughs> so I used to draw cars and like Fast and Furious came out and I used to draw all, tor all types of stuff like that. And okay. Then, uh, like Tokyo like, Drift or like the, the other ones? All of them. I'm, okay. I'm into all of them. Um, What's the best one in the series? What's the best movie? Definitely the first one because yeah. of the story. Family. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I got to high school and I got I met my art teacher, Mr. Walter, okay. and he showed me a, a system called. Is that his first name or his last name? No, it's his last name. Uh, he showed me a method called he calls it the Great Method. So you print off a, uh, a photo you want to draw and mm -hmm. you do a, a, a grid on that. Okay. And then you get a piece of paper and you can scale that photo up or down depending on how you do the grid. And then um, you just draw one box at a time. And then, so it's, it's a really easy way to um, get your proportions right and make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. And so I started doing that and it was, it helped my stuff out a lot because I was struggling with the proportions. That makes sense because like I see you post like uh, a picture and then your drawing is like right next to it and it looks like yeah. pretty identical. So for me personally, I don't think what I do currently is considered art. I kind of just copy a photo and then do my my style on top of it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you're, you're drawing. I have one that's a, it's an original concept um, piece that I'm doing. I haven't finished it yet because I've been drawing for other people. Um, but once I get to it, it's a, I don't know how to explain it. It's a, it's an idea out of my head that I'm putting on paper. So for me, it feels like an actual art piece. Cause that's what I was like, should I call him an artist? Cause like that word is like used like so colloquially, like 
oh, this is an art. He's an artist. I'm an artist. All artists sticking together, and it's like not used like in the way of art anymore. Yeah. I'm like, okay, you're a drawer, and I'm like, no, that's where my socks go. <laughs> yeah. So what I do is more closely related to tattooing. Okay. Except I have an eraser. Gotcha. You got a lot of tats too. <laughs> I'm working on it. I would like to finish my sleeves up, and then eventually I want to do a full back piece, but. With my stretch marks, we'll see how long that goes. Would that, would that take longer? Well, no, the stretch marks hurt a lot more. Oh. Just because it's a thinner skin. Okay. I have no frame of reference. <laughs> I'm zero tats. I have stretch marks. Plenty of stretch marks. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's go ahead and sit back up. How many people do you have passed out on here? Uh, I've had two in my career. Two? I thought of all the ones I got close on uh, one tattoo, and I made the mistake of uh, not eating before I went. That's different. They felt the same. A little bit. And, and my feet were a little further apart, but I could tell it's a little bit better. Okay. Less tension. Yes, for sure. Okay. So the back of the looser. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and like I said, we may not change much of the range. Some of that's just maybe the shape of your joints, but we can mm -hmm. definitely get the tension out of the, you know, the muscles, of course. Yeah, for sure. It definitely feels a lot better. Okay, good. My back, my lower back's been killing me for like a month now. So that feels like, feels lighter? Is that yeah, it? for sure. Okay. All right, we're gonna go here. So I'm gonna have you look straight down. Then pick your head back up. Then go ahead and go straight down. And back up. And down. You can definitely pop a watermelon with those thumbs. <laughs> watermelon time. It's watermelon time. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go right here. Tilt your head to the right. Come back to center. And then again to the right. And center. Again to the right, and center, and again. Good, again, good, again, good. Two more times, and one more. Good. That's the other thing about like neck tension too, is like your neck is longer, so when you're looking down at an iPad or whatever, like there's just a lot more force going on your muscles and tendons. Yeah, I'm always looking down for the most part. Yeah, it's very rare unless, you know, the Blue Angels are in town or something, you know. What else are you looking up at? All right, we're gonna go to right here. Same thing, go ahead and down. So are you the most famous person from your hometown? Um, I would humbly say yes. <laughs> but, um, I think there's a few people that have made it out of here that have done some pretty cool things. I'm not up on that though. Okay. Um, I do know that Ellensburg is one of the higher paying um, things for uh, pro bull riding. Okay. So some so, PBR people? Yep. So I think the last stop after here is either, I think it's Vegas after here. Okay. For the pro bull riders. Do you watch that stuff? Um. Occasionally, once in a while, I'll go just because it's here in town. Okay. But I don't normally watch that kind of stuff. Okay, just like as a social event? Yeah. Okay. You watch basketball? I don't. So I was wondering, because you're like, yeah, I went to the Suns game and, you know. It was a fun experience for sure, but um, I played a little bit of basketball growing up in elementary school and then a little bit in middle school, but my knees were not liking it at all. Was that because you wanted to play or because you felt pressure? Um, partially because I was pressured, okay. just because I was the tallest guy in town. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I kind of enjoyed just shooting hoop. Okay. Back to center. And tilt to the left again. And back to center. And again. But yeah, basketball is one of the only sports where like, people look at somebody and they're like, yeah, you got to come. Yeah. I guess maybe some football, but, like if there's a, like, a buff kid in like, high school or whatever, the so, football coach is like, come on. Yeah. I tried football in middle school, but my mobility didn't allow me to really play. Yeah. Um, if, I, if I had a sport that I wanted to pick, it would have been football and wrestling. Okay. All right. Turn, turn your head to the left all the way. And then keep turning to the left. Keep turning. Keep going. Keep going. A little further. Keep turning. A little bit further. A little bit further. Good. Okay. Let's go to the right all the way. So turn to the right. Keep turning. Keep turning. 
keep going. A little further. A little further. Good. Okay. Look up all the way. Okay. And then back to center. Look up again. Keep looking up. Keep going up. Keep going. A little further. A little further. A little bit more, a little more, there we go, yeah. Much better. The loser? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right on, bite down, pretty hard. Feel anything there? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah? Okay. Where'd you feel it? Top of the neck? Yeah. Okay. I might be a little off, but I've had that cane way too long. What'd you say? I said I might be a little off, but I've had that cane way too long. Yeah. How's that feel in my neck then? Oh, awesome. There we go. Get that one, Bob. Yeah. And not too much on that one. Okay. Let me have you turn the face this way. All right. Go ahead and put them up there. Lock you on right there. And then try to relax. Let's go ahead and stand up. And we'll face that way. And you're good there balance wise? Yeah. Okay, lean back a little bit with your upper body. Keep leaning back. Try to tilt your head back, I guess, if you can. Mm -hmm. There you go, my camera. Okay. Yeah, we'll be good. I just don't want to fall over on you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'll catch you, but... Your, your height is, is up there, but I've, I've caught guys way heavier. <laughs> so, lean back more. Alright, let's get that. Okay. Catch your balance. Alright, let's stand up as tall as you can now. Less pressure on the low back there? Yeah, for sure. right here. Tilt your upper body to the left. And then come back to center. And then tilt to the left again. And center. And again. Center. And again. Good. And one more time. Good. Okay. I'm get right here. All right. And center. And again. And center. And again. And center. And again. Good. One more time. Good. Having sore? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Get your balance again there. Much better. Yeah. Let's see how tall you can stand. Yeah, that's actually it's easier for me to stand up now, huh? Yeah, it feels way easier to st stretch out. Yeah, you could you could kind of push through that other end range. Yeah, because yeah. before I, I'm used to hunch, being hunched over, not being able to extend. Okay. Yeah, so you need to you do need somebody to do a little more soft tissue before yeah. going any more frequently. So I'll put together kind of a list of exercises, stuff that like you know your friends can kind of do on you too. Yeah. Um, particularly like some cup stretching that okay. they can do like easily. You could probably do it yourself, but um, yeah. that should help to at least bridge the gap between your 10 massages. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, you might just need the, the massages to just turn it up a little bit as far as like yeah. the pressure. Because I mean, you, you have thick tissue, so yeah, I mean, as you said, the watermelon thumbs have got to get out the ante a little bit. Yeah. All right. Oh, close. <laughs> You're so close, babe. Just a little guy. Just a little guy. Like I said, you know, how much motion are we gonna get in some of these joints? I don't know, because <laughs> again, the shape of the ends of your bones are a little, yeah. you know. The types of cracks are gonna be different than they would be on me. Well, you got one over there. Yeah, you got one. Okay. You'll listen to the lower back? Yeah, that's for sure. Cool. All right, guys, if you haven't already, are you on TikTok too? No, I'm not on TikTok, just, just, Instagram? Not, just Instagram. Okay, 
Uh, we'll, we'll link below. Make sure you guys go give him a follow. Show him some love. Check out some of his art. Uh, and if you haven't, you can go check out his old interviews, like the stuff he had with Dr. Oz and Oprah. And keep an eye on him. He's going to have some new art coming out soon. And you need to start shooting some of these videos when you get in these big cars, man. I know. <laughs> you should probably do some of the GoPro stuff, too. That's a, that's a great idea. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because, I mean, you're a whole foot taller than the other dude. So. I know. Just the point of view kind of thing. Yeah, you're like, the seven foot view is cool, but have you guys seen the eight foot view? <laughs> you know? And then you put the, the little Wayne song over, it's like six foot, <laughs> seven foot, eight foot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, thanks again for coming on. Make sure you guys go show this man some love and we'll catch you guys in the next time.